Our today's experiment is DC motor speed control system. This is the setup. We are controlling the speed of this DC shunt motor using a control rectifier. This is the power circuit based on 4 SCR. 4, 4 SCR make full bridge control rectifier. For this 4 SCR we need 4 gate pulse and that 4 gate pulse we are getting from this control unit. So first we see how the firing pulse is generated. There are the different section in this control circuit. This is the sensing transformer. The input reference sine wave signal is obtained from this step down transformer. Input voltage is applied here and then it is up, uh, stepped down to up, approximately 12 volts and this 12 volt reference sinusoidal is used as a reference signal and it is first fed to the ZCD. ZCD means zero crossing detector. Zero crossing detector detect the zero crossing point of the reference sinusoidal signal. So you can see this is the uh, this is the sine wave. So every zero crossing we are getting this type of pulse. It's called the ZCD pulse. Zero crossing detector detect the zero crossing point which is used at the reference point for the firing pulse generation. Okay. Actually we are measuring the firing angle from the zero crossing. That's why zero crossing point is important. So here you can see uh, zero crossing pulse we are getting like this and there are two zero crossing one is negative to positive zero crossing another is positive to negative zero crossing so every cycle we are getting the two signal like this you can see these two zero crossings are out of phase you can see so this is for the positive half and this is for the negative half okay so we generate the two gate pulse for the two sets of SCR, SCR 180 degree out of phase. Okay. And respect to this two zero crossing pulse, we are generating two gate pulse. Okay. After that, this zero crossing signal is fed to the RAM generator section. It is consist of uh, differentiator, integrator and one inverting amplifier. Okay, so when this pulse is applied to here, after that we are getting a triangular wave from here. You can see frequency of this uh, ZCD signal is the same as the input reference signal. So which, which is the equal to the output, uh, which is the equal to the input frequency. So it is showing the 50 hertz now. So when this two ZCD 50 hertz ZCD pulse is applied to the uh, RAM generator and from output we are getting a 100 hertz RAM signal. See, so see this RAM signal is 100 hertz. So it is 50 hertz and it is 100 hertz. Just double of this ZCD pulse. So after that this RAM signal is fed to the comparator. This is the comparator circuit. The one input of this comparator is the RAM signal and another input is the DC supply. A variable DC and you can change the amplitude of this control voltage using this knob. So when we compare this RAM signal and this variable DC, so we are getting a PWM signal. This is the PWM signal and width of this PWM signal is depends on the control voltage. So if we vary the control voltage, see the width of the PWM signal is varying. So after that this PWM signal is fed to the AND gate through a mono shot. Mono shot is nothing but a mono stable multi vibrator. It provides the stable re pulse which is very narrow 
in nature and it's keeping the same triggering age of the PWM signal. Then the monoshot output is fed to the AND gate and another oscillator is here. It's generate a carrier frequency a very high frequency. You can see now the frequency is showing 7.87 kilohertz. That means it is uh, about 8 kilohertz high frequency square wave. And this carrier wave is fed to the AND gate. Now see different input of N gates. So first one input is coming from the monoshot and which is the output of the comparator actually. So and another input is directly from the ZCD. You can see this is the ZCD and one more signal is the carrier which is the very high frequency of uh, about uh, 8 kilohertz. And as it is uh, for input AND gate, so there is another supply to active this AND gate used uh, here we use the 5 volts. So, so that 5 volt is coming from this switch. Here you can see the this is the 5 volts. Okay, this this is this 5 volts used as a debounce logic. That means it. Uh, and this signal can control the output of this AND gate. Okay. Now, if we turn off this, then output of this AND gate will be zero. Okay. Like this. So, this 5 volt is used to active this AND These are the waveform of the different test point TP1, that means the reference input voltage step down 12 volts sinusoidal and after that it's the positive ZCD pulse so it's like that it is 50 hertz and this is the negative ZCD pulse and which is also the 50 hertz but it is out of phase that means uh, it is 180 degree out of this okay so this pulse is represent the positive z pulse on the represent the positive cycle of the reference signal and this ZCD is represent this negative cycle. So here is the zero crossing. So here is the zero crossing. Here is the zero crossing. Okay. Now see after that we are getting the 100 hertz RAM signal. It's here and it is compared with the DC voltage, variable DC voltage, which is used, uh, which is called the control voltage. So, if we vary this control voltage, you can see this, this is, this rising is, is varied. That means the PWM, it is PWM signal and the width of this PWM is depends on the control voltage. That means this rising is, is shifting. Okay. And after that, it is fed to the monoshot, and monoshot uh, keeping this rising as same. Monoshot reduce the width of this pulse. Okay, because here only triggering is is our requirement is only triggering is. Okay, this must uh, width is not required. This must voltage is not required. So that's why monoshot monoshot is reduce the width of this pulse okay and keeping the same rising as okay after that see here is the carrier oscillator we, we have seen the frequency of the carrier oscillator is 8 8 kilohertz then we are comparing all the three signals all the three that means first is ZCD signal and monoshot output and this now you see the frequency of the different test points. Here it is 50 hertz. Here also the 50 hertz. And here also 50 hertz. But here we are getting 100 hertz. Okay. Here 100 hertz. Due to that we are getting this pulse. That's why this also the 100 hertz. And finally monoshot output also the 100 hertz. Okay. 
Now when we compare this 50 Hz ACD pulse, 100 Hz monoshot output and this carrier wave, then we will get this type of thing. Okay, because here see again it is converted into 50 Hz. Okay, so but this set is comparing with the another set of uh, negative Z C D that is why it is out of phase. Okay. So, these gate pulse are used for the positive half control and this gate pulse is used for the negative half control. So, that means this gate pulse are triggered one set of SCR and this gate pulse is triggered another set of SCR. Now, see before isolation gate pulses look like this. Say if we zoom it, you can see inside this there are so many pulses and the frequency of this pulses is equal to the carrier frequency. So why it comes like this? Because we are comparing this with the 8 kilohertz. Okay. Finally, we are isolating the pulse with this isolation transformer. So for that here is a individual ground. So, if we connect across Xeon, this is the final output. So, final pulse look like this. If we zoom it and so this is the final pattern. If we zoom it, see this this is the pulse pattern. After that we are connecting the pulse with the SCR. Now we are connecting the gate pulse to the SCR. So this is the SCR1, SCR1 gate is connected to Z1. Then this is K1 then SCR2 G2 and this is K2 then SCR3 G3 this is K3 SCR4 this is Z4 and finally this is K4. These two SCR, SCR1 and SCR2 is controlling the positive half and that is why these pulse are in same sequence but it is isolated and another set SCR3 and SCR4 control the negative half and it is connected with the other pulse. Now, we are applying the input here, input voltage is applying here as input voltage, it is AC and now I am turning on the MCB and applying the gate pulse. See, now we connect this lamp as a load and if we vary the firing angle, you can see intensity of lamp is changing and output voltage is varying. Now if we connect the oscilloscope across this lamp, see, so this is the output voltage pattern. Now see if we changing the firing angle, if we change the firing angle, see output waveform is changing and and from here we can measure the firing angle if we increase it and see here is the zero crossing and here it is fired and this is the firing angle that means this is the firing angle and from the oscilloscope we can measure the firing angle using the cursor here is the cursor button cursor choose the cursor suppose 
we select the time cursor and before that stop it and here is zero crossing here is zero crossing and go to another cursor and is the firing point this is the firing point it is showing 4.2 millisecond and if it is 50 hertz input is 50 hertz then per millisecond is equal to 18 degree that means 4.2 into 18 that is the firing angle so that way you can measure the firing angle and so varying the firing angle we should measure the output voltage um, using multimeter and calculate the output output voltage using the firing angle and the input voltage finally we can compare the theoretical value and the practical value now we are connecting the dc motor so this is the armature coil this is the armature connection we are varying the armature voltage here and shunt is supplying from a fixed voltage source so 220 volts is applied to the shunt coil rated voltage of this motor is 220 volts now we are applying the armature voltage we are varying the armature voltage you can see uh, now it is motor is running now you can see this motor is running and voltage waveform is look like this voltage waveform is like this now if we increase the voltage the speed of the motor will increase motor speed is increasing and waveform also changing can see this is the output of forms say motor is running and we can vary the speed of the motor using this firing angle changing this firing angle we can vary the speed of the motor the motor speed is reducing now now we can note down the speed of the motor and to measure the firing angle from the uh, controller by the oscilloscope we can measure the firing angle and using the multimeter we can measure the output voltage and calculate the output voltage using the firing angle voltage okay and so that way we can control the speed of DC motor using control rectifier we can vary the speed of DC motor very easily by just varying the firing angle and I think it is clear to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. Turning off.